it felt to me that this was such a great opportunity and a privilege and a chance, a selfish chance, for me to stay connected with Columbia. It is a great platform to challenge yourself and really push yourself to become a leader. When you look at the other Ivy League schools, Columbia by far has the largest student veteran population of any one of the schools. Being from Columbia, I am not easily intimidated by um, high hurdles. That's something I see across the board when I work with Columbia people. You give of yourselves to Alma Mater and that is Alma Mater's greatest gift. We spend a lot of time trying to think about how we fit in. After being at Columbia, I realized that my future was gonna be determined by how I stood out. Moselle W. Thompson, Columbia College International School of Public Affairs and Columbia Law School. Congratulations and thank you. I come from pretty modest means. My father was an airline mechanic. My mother was from Tokyo. They didn't know a lot about college. I was part of probably about 5% of the class who were African American. While I was here at, at Columbia, I met at least three more people who were half black and half Japanese. I think the course serves such a vital purpose, whether you went to Phillips Exeter or whether you went to school in Brooklyn, you all had to go through the same exercise. You all had to look at these works and express your own ideas. At the law school, I wasn't just interested in the corporate side where a lot of people were going at the time, but also always thought about the interest in public service. I feel like we should have an obligation to leave Columbia a better place than we came. So I do a lot of mentoring. One of the things I'd like to think that I contributed to my time at the Alumni Association is the recognition that the Alumni Association would have to become more uh, diverse and encompassing. This year, 63% of the incoming class in the college self-identifies people of color. I got the Heritage Award from the Black Alumni Council. They have funded professorships, they've funded scholarships, and they've become a very important part of how Columbia views its alumni. But I also have a great affinity for the CAA. Oftentimes, Columbia is, prides itself on how strong its individual schools are, but there's a lot of connective tissue in there. <laughs> to be up on the dais and getting the alumni medal, I was just looking out at all these young people smiling and excited and thinking, 40 years ago I was sitting in their seats thinking, what was going to happen to me? I only applied to um, one or two schools and I think if you want to do journalism, you pick Columbia. Phyllis Fang Savage, class of 93, journalism. It's intimidating at first. We got very close to someone called Peter Herford. He's still around, he's ex-CBS, and he was in Vietnam, and he really gave us real-life directions. My group, we chose to do, is Central Park dangerous at night? So we went out with the cops, we spent all night with the cops in Central Park, and everybody had a role, and we put together a whole program about that. You have this sort of secret handshake language that says, Columbia, you know, journalism, I'm sure you can do the work. When you move to a new country, uh, like I did, we didn't know many people. So I started first asking, okay, who are the J School alums? So I started, you know, the Bangalore chapter, then um, started getting involved with CAA India, and then became a CAA board member. And we are known in Bangalore, among all the other alumni clubs, as the most organized and uh, most active because we do have the CA behind us. And a lot of schools, they set their clubs up independently with no communication from sort of the mothership. Dean Cole uh, came out to India this year and we're always thrilled to have any dean come from any school, but in particular, you know, dean from my school, we were thrilled um, to have him come, show great interest in India. There are a lot of students from India now at the J School and now uh, there is the Global Center of Mumbai trying to get them to come out to different parts of India as well. So to come back and um, have my children and my family here, I think that was a pretty special experience and I think how the university prizes their alums and puts them on stage 
and show the recent grads that alums are really important, I think, I think it's pretty amazing. And it was an amazing ceremony. When I left uh, the Marines, I started working full time at the United Nations in Midtown. And you find the school that sits there and says, listen, you've had a different background, you've had life experiences, we want you, come on in. Richard M. Space, Junior School of General Studies. I think one of the great things about general studies in Columbia University overall is the commitment to make sure that there is a robust veteran population on campus. Alexander Hamilton, a Revolutionary War general and one of the founding fathers fought in the Revolutionary War, was, was a veteran. I was actually in the Security Council when Colin Powell gave his presentation about the weapons of mass destruction and whether what they had found at the UN in the presentation there. Later that evening, I was at school at a political science class where that was discussed. We started an informal group, Military Veterans at Columbia University, the group uh, now known as MILVETS. So I'd say we spent more time probably drinking and debating things, but with that said, developed some of the relationships that I have uh, today. Uh, some of my best friends are folks that were in that group at the time. Shortly after I graduated were myself and then a few other individuals who got together to basically start what we call the Recent Alumni Leadership Committee, where I think it was one of um, GS's first alumni groups for recent alumni. One thing is that the Milvet student group that I had helped co-found along with a variety of others in 2002 has morphed into a very powerful campus organization. A few years back it actually helped push through the Yellow Ribbon Program and they did this working closely with the administration at the school to go ahead and make sure that veterans who are graduating didn't graduate with any kind of debt. Founding at Columbia Veterans Inc. came about in, in a couple of different ways. In the summer of 2012, we had had a number of conversations with students on campus who are veterans. We basically sat there and said, we've got this great experience, we've got this great group on campus that's grown from 12 to close to 400. How do we keep this network alive, this, this, this shared experience, the shared bonds that we have, how do we keep that alive post-graduation? It's sharing that, that experience with others where you've got this common bond, and I think that's one of the greatest things about Columbia. Rita Pietro Pinto Kitt, class of 93, Columbia College, class of 96, School of the Arts. I really wanted to be at Columbia. It was, it was a goal for me from when I was a little girl. And they said, oh, sweetie, you can't, because it was all men. It was delightful when I realized that they were admitting women. I met my husband at Columbia. I also discovered my love and my passion for the theater. We kind of came to that realization together and both went on to careers in that area. The Varsity Show was probably the most formative experience that I had at Columbia. So a day or two before performance in front of 800 alumni, we realized we didn't have any of the music that we needed to perform, and we all panicked. And someone said to me, you know, there's this guy, Tom Kitt, and he's a really great pianist. And I met him about an hour later in the theater, and he was at the Baby Grand playing the full score. I fell in love probably right at that moment with this freshman. The School of the Arts, I was in the first acting class. I actually had my audition here in this <laughs> studio. I did not want to leave as graduation was approaching. Being invited to the um, Columbia Alumni Association board as a student, I looked around and I saw all of these alums who were still there. So I realized, well, I never really had to leave. I was lucky to be a part of that core group that was identifying what alumni need right when they graduate from school. We're good, okay. We're good, excellent. What I brought to the CAA was the vantage point of having gone to the college and then having a very different experience going to a graduate school here in the School of the Arts. It occurred to me that the arts was a great way of bringing people together, whether you're working in the arts or appreciate the arts, which um, ultimately became the, the CAA Arts Access. I certainly have such an incredible opportunity being able to teach here now, and it's um, given me so much as well as an artist and, and as an alum to be able to come back and do that. I promise you they are fearless and they will make us proud, just as alumni medalist Rita Petro Pinto Kitt did today. That was so special for me to have the kids there that day and my family there, my parents were there, my sister, my husband. Them being a part of it was, was just wonderful.